morning, my dear students. So we are now in the week four of our TLE subjects, and we're going to discuss for today about drafting pattern for household linens. Last week we have discussed about the different parts and the contents of a project plan. Now we are going to move with how to make a pattern for your household linen. So after going through this module, you are expected to first draft pattern of household linens and also observe safety precautions when dealing with the different sewing tools and sewing machines as well as how to sew a household linen. So let's start with this pattern paper. So my question is what can you say about the picture? Can this be used in drafting a pattern? Can you name the different kinds of pattern paper? And what do you think are the steps in drafting a table runner? So first, what is pattern drafting? So pattern drafting or making is a highly skilled technique which calls for technical ability and a sensitivity to interpret a design with a practical understanding of garment construction. So before making your garment, either it is a blouse, pants, or any household linen, you need to make a pattern drafting or pattern making after you get the measurements of what you are going to do. A pattern paper is usually used in drafting a project like sewing a blouse, a pair of pants, or a dress. But for simple projects like a placemat, a table runner, or dishcloth, a newspaper or manila paper will serve the purpose. So we can either use pattern paper or newspaper and manila paper as our pattern drafting. We also have different kinds of pattern. The first one is black pattern. So black pattern is made by drafting from the measurements which have been carefully taken from an individual or from a model. The second is the construction pattern, which is the intervening step between the block and the final pattern. Third is the final pattern. It is provided with the necessary symbols that will guide the cutter on how to lay out the pattern on the cloth. Symbols for dart sim allowances, grain line, center fold, notches, and other markers are used. We also have the last kind of pattern which is commercial pattern that refers to a standardized pattern ready-made and bought. So these are the different kinds of pattern. We have block pattern, construction pattern, final pattern, and commercial pattern. These are the steps on how to draft pattern for table runner. First is to draw a construction line mark point A as a starting point. So we are going to draw a construction line which is consists of a horizontal and a vertical line and mark letter A as our starting point. Step number two. A, B, or from point A, we are going to measure 59 inches going to the right or 150 centimeters and mark point B as the length of the table runner. So from point A, going to the right, we are going to measure 59 inches or 150 centimeters that will serve as the length of the table runner. Don't forget to mark point B at the end of the 59 inches. Third step, AC. From point A, we are going to measure 12 inches upward and mark point C as the width of a table runner. So after measuring the length of the table runner, 
we are now going to measure the width of a table rod wherein we are going to start from point A going up and mark it as point C. Fourth step, letter D. It will be the intersecting point of C and B, like this picture. Step 5, we are going to add 1 inch for stitching line allowance using broken line. So after we have point A, B, C, and D, we are going to add 1 inch at the outer part of those lines for the stitching line allowance. And we are going to use broken lines. For step number 6, we are going to cut the pattern following the broken line as the cutting line. We are now going with the safety rules in sewing. So the first rule in general hygiene requirements for sewing is to First, before you begin, you should hide your hair for convenience. Number two, the light should fall on the working surface from the left side or from the front. If you are a right-handed, you should fall your light from the working surface from your left side. And if you are a left-handed, you should have your light fall on the working surface from the right side. Safety precautions when working with fabric, thread, and accessories. Keep all needlework during work breaks in the product package. Keep all small parts from the set in special box. When working, do not bite through the thread with your teeth or tear it with your hands. The length of the thread when, use, when sewing must not exceed the length of the distance to the elbow. When working the seed bead, use shallow containers like saucer. When working with bulk materials, you should put on a face mask. Safety precautions when working with needles and pins. First, keep needles and pins at a certain place. It is either a special box, cushion, etc. Do not leave them at the workplace. Never take the needle, pins in your mouth and do not stick them in your clothes. Do not also leave a needle and pins in the product that you are going to make. Use thimble when sewing. Do not use rusty needles and pins in your work. Attach patterns to fabric with sharp ends of pins away from you. Collect and dispose pieces of broken needles or pins. Wrap it in a paper. Count the number of pins taken before work and the number of pins at the end of the work. It should be or it must be the same number. Safety precautions when working with scissors. Keep the scissors in case, in the case and out of reach of children. When working, do not leave the scissors blade open. Do not hold scissors with sharp sides up. And do not use them when central fastener is weakened. When working closely, observe the direction of cutting. Do not cut in motion. When working, hold the material with your left hand so that the fingers are away from the blade. Safety precautions when working on the sewing machine. Before starting the work, remove needles and pins from the machine. Check the holding strength of the needle and presser. 
when working, the distance to the machine has to be 10 to 15 centimeters. No foreign objects have to be located next to the machine during operation. When sewing, hands have to be at the safe distance from the moving parts of the machine. Sewing household linens. So how to sew a household linen, especially a table runner? These are the materials that you are going to need. Drafted pattern, which has a measurement of 1.5 meter length and 12 inches wide. 1.5 meter fabric, it can either be printed or in a plain fabric. One spool thread, which is the same color of the fabric that you are going to use. Tailor's chalk or pencil, pins and needles. We also need some tools like ruler, tape measure, and scissor. We can also use equipments like iron or ironing board. These are the procedures that we can do to make or to sew a household linen like a table runner. First is to lay the fabric on the table with the wrong side up. So the wrong side is the back of a fabric. Next is to lay the drafted pattern on top of the fabric. Third one is to pin the pattern on the fabric to keep in place. Fourth is from the edges of the pattern, we are going to mark with one half inch allowance on the fabric. So from the drafted pattern, you are going to have an allowance of one half inch along or around the fabric. Cut the fabric all around the pattern. If you can see in the picture, the white part is the drafted pattern. And he or she is cutting the fabric with the one half inch allowance around the pattern. Then to form the hem, fold the one half inch allowance inwards. Then pin. After forming the hem, you are going to baste it all around to keep the fold in place. So the folded place, like this one, should be basted or we should use the basting stitch, like this one. Next is to stitch or sew the hem by hand all around. Lastly is to check each part and remove hanging threads. After removing the hanging threads, we can also iron the fabric to flatten out the whole fabric. So these are the steps in sewing a household linen like a table runner. Thank you and goodbye!